I sort of only really come in where people have trouble. So it's right. it's it's a success. So story you're always for me, see, you're I'm, you're always seeing the failure, the, the, the sort of the people that really fall through the cracks, and we're already talking about the the system that saves the people that are struggling. So yeah, it's yeah, really they, falling through the cracks they, through the cracks. Yeah, yeah, that's it. They they fell through the cracks. And then somehow so they're on the to safety net. The safety they're on the safety net, net and they're falling through that, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so, so I I do remember one where um, I I went into work and income with this person who had um, he he was going in to apply for uh, some root canals. Yeah. And so he'd been to the dentist, and the dentist said you need these root canals. Yeah. Yeah. And he'd previously been in, you know, three times to try and apply to win to win right. for this. So. So the way the dental system works is you can get three hundred dollars uh, as a grant, so you don't have to pay that back, and then yeah. anything above that is an advance uh, is an advance payment on your benefit. So you have to pay it back. Um, so for if medical, you, if care. you have a work that you know, like let's say you have excruciating toothache, I mean, you know, you can't, you have to, you can't just expect people to live in pain. That's so. A, that's, that's a sort of basic necessary. So human so the, this is emergency dental treatment, yeah. right? The, it's. The max is three hundred dollars. That, that's gonna pay for like one filling. Like yes, God. And, and and so, this this guy went into work and then come a handful of times and somehow always got declined. And then I go in with him, and uh, I I sit down with him and he sits down and he says I I need a root canal and he he provides the quote that he's been given from mm. the dentist and the case manager goes oh this looks a bit high and then the service center manager so the big boss of the service center comes over and goes oh okay so this is three root canals here do you need them and blah 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 oh, do you need I, them exactly. if a dentist tells you you need a root canal yeah and, 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 <laughs> it's and not so an they, option option oh no maybe maybe they, like, uh, so they were going through line by line and going oh well maybe we'll just uh we can give you enough for one. And I, I'm, I'm sitting there and I go, oh, okay, so per, perhaps you guys are, are dental experts. I, I'm, I'm sure not. I'm just going with the opinion of the medical professional. Mm. I, I mean, I, I guess the decision's yours, but I'm, I'm, on, I've, I'm of the opinion that we should just listen to what this, uh, this professional has to say. Yeah. Because I mean, it's, this it's, guy it's, needs it's to... It's in the code of practice. They can't recommend treatment that isn't necessary. No dentist, no doctor is going to say, oh, well, let's just chop off the arm because I feel like an amputation today. That's it. They, they, they say these things are emergency and essential. Yeah. Like, that, that, this is coming from a medical professional. Mm. And, even and then you're that, having them second-guessed yes, by people in WINS that have no... You know, nothing to do with. I, I mean, per, perhaps they were dentists. Right, but yeah, yeah. Why are they Moonlighting, moonlighting is, is yeah, yeah. receptions, right? That, that's it. And so I, I mean, just just off the back of that, me going, yeah, well, maybe you guys are dentists and you know what you're on about. I don't. I'm following the medical professional. Right. They went, oh yeah, no, you're right, and they signed it off. And the guy, mm. the guy was able to go and get the root. So, do you required. think that was a one-time thing or like a general Not sort of thing in that? Their instinctive reaction was to try and second guess this essential medical care. You, uh, I, I mean, I'll, I'll fall back on on some uh, antidotal experience. Yeah, yeah, some more anecdotal experience. But uh, uh, I'll fall back onto the supported living payment. So yeah. the supported living payment, in in order to get on it, you have to um, go to the doctor and you have to have a condition which is going to put you out of work for. Uh, so it's basically a disability benefit. You can't. Work. It, it, it's it's the old uh, invalid's benefit, yeah. right? Um, and so you go to the doctor, and the doctor says, "No, you can't work." Yeah. And you take this medical certificate to work and income. Yeah. And even then, you know they they have their own system, which you know, from the looks of it, might violate um, some rights under the Bill of Rights. Uh, in terms of like personal privacy, n- n- no, the um, it's in terms of uh, a free and fair trial, so the right. the right to the um, observance of the principles of natural justice, right? Uh, so n- no man may be his own judge is, is sort of the right. So that's sort of impartial, impartiality, impartiality, and like you yeah. know not being the sort of sole educator of yeah, yeah. So so you go to your doctor, and your doctor says this person's going to be out of work for. Uh, at least two years. You yeah. know, this is a chronic illness. Yeah. And work and income can send you to their own little regional health authority who will look at it again. And, and these people are sometimes um, 
doctors, sometimes occupational therapists, things like this. But, employed but, by wind. Yeah. Oh well, I I think I think that arrangement isn't quite employment, but, but it's, it's connected. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, the it, it it really boggles the mind that you can go and get an opinion from a medical, from a medical pro- doctor. Yeah, yeah. A medical professional. Yeah. Who you know, every single time they sign one of these off, they're putting their reputation yeah. on the line. Well, I mean, any any medical professional that's that's writing certificates that you know are for stuff that isn't um, you know required, it's not going to be in work very long. There's a standard that we have in New Zealand where a doctor's word is their word, that's and it. if you cannot trust that doctor's word, you should be then filing malpractice against that doctor, not quibbling over with a third party. Yeah, yeah, that's it. So, so you you so consistently see people who have uh, medical certificates filled out by a medical professional, which say. They will be out of work and then wins will send you to somebody else and this person will decide, actually, no, we think you can work. And, and you know, I, I have friends who this has happened to over and over and over yeah. and it, it continues to happen. And, and so, you know, when you look at this this person who wanted, or who needed some root canals and then work and income saying, ah, oh, no, we don't, we don't think you need it. Mm. That's exactly what's happening with supported living payment time and time and time and time and time again. Wow. So, okay, let's get back on to, like, you were actually telling me about this client. So did he manage to get his root canal? Yeah. yeah, So you managed to actually say to them, look, you're not not dentists. It says emergency care. This guy needs to get, like, not have this pain. I've had, had, you know, this sort of thing where I need a root canal. And I was in pain for, like, three days. I was popping painkillers, you know, I was taking codeine, I was taking Panadol. It was unbearable. Meanwhile, this guy needed three and as well had been in several times before getting different quotes from different dentists wow. and taking wow. them in. And they would say, no, 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 this isn't cheap enough or no, no, no. Uh, you can't just make someone live in pain while you're making them jump through hoops. That's uh, so far. Working can and will. Gosh, okay, so we've got a bit of a success story, but it's very tainted but by the bitterness in which the system works. That's that sort of mixed things there. Um, uh, what are some of the reoccurring barriers your clients face in getting uh, getting wind support? So, yeah. I mean, you just mentioned about how, you know, you're getting, um, you know, second guess by stuff. I mean, so what else, what other sort of things are there? Oh, uh, yeah, um, with, with the, the way that I work with people, and uh, it's a rule from AAAP, which I quite like and yeah. follow, we... We don't call people clients. You right, know, okay. We work with people. people. You know, that does make sense. You yeah, know? yeah. Because yeah. we're we're not that guy on the other side of the desk. You know, we yeah. we work with people. We're yeah. Your pain is my pain. Yeah. You know, the, this is how it works. It's yeah. the same. So struggle. we're not we're not dehumanizing. I guess, exactly, so and, and that that sort of answers the question as, uh, as well. You know, you you go into uh, work and income, and you deal with this person across the desk. They're they're not your advocate, which is your the, case manager. Yeah, your case manager. That that's sort of what you imagine they would be. Well, um, I would have thought that you know, Wynn's case manager would be there to look at your case and make sure that you actually got the help you needed, um, help you get the benefits that you need. Um, so talk to you about you know your needs in terms of like you know food or accommodation and stuff like that, and make sure that you could actually you know exactly. get that help. I mean, that's that's work and income. They're how there to help you if you're working exactly income and. Um, one of my friends actually published an interesting paper on this recently, um, which was about uh, the the way that case managers work. So case managers, uh, you know, previously they were the people who did do that. Right. So, you, so you go in and they go, oh, yeah, yeah, so you should have accommodation supplement and this and that. And how's everything going at home? Do you have enough of food? Do you need a food grant? And do you... Um, you know, like, do you have everything you need in your house? You can get advances for this, that, and the other, that sort of thing. But but more and more, they are becoming this um, a, a barrier to between you and the system. And it, it comes down to this, uh, this thing called gatekeeping, where your case manager will stand there and will try and prevent you from getting what you are... Uh, what you're entitled to sounds like a fir- the the first boss in a dungeon. You've got to defeat the defeat the boss to yeah, yeah, exactly. get on to the next level. And the worst thing is, there's an even more hideous one standing just behind <laughs> so the, so the service center. It is a dungeon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. And, and and so the the thing is, these case managers they'll lie to you, and they uh, 
and I I do about, say this about your requirement about what you're eligible for. Yeah, yeah. I and and I say this, um, you know, quite confidently. Pe- people get a little bit annoyed when I say case managers lie to people. Case managers lie to people. Right. The the this is. This is why you, you've seen this so many times. I've seen person. it time and time again. Right. In almost every single instance where I've gone and sat down in front of a case manager, they they have lied to the person I've been working with. Wow. And, and so the, this is the thing, like the reoccurring barriers, they're the case managers mm. because it's not about the rules being applied anymore. It's not about uh, getting, uh, it's not about supporting the person it yeah. is about trying to minimize, hold back as much as possible. And, so, it's, and so their job is basically these days to sort of try and, I guess, d- defer um, to to dissuade as many people as possible from actually getting the assistance they need. And, and and the thing is, when a case manager does that to you, when this happens to you, when you have uh, this barrier put in front of you and they they make this decision no we're not going to give this to you and it's an informal and um very arbitrary arbitrary barrier yeah they it's it's a it it takes so long to try and rectify so there is a process to rectify so you can submit a review of decision and if this ever happens to you and some and a decision is made that you don't agree with, always, always, always submit a review of decision and never, never, never withdraw them. And, and so if, if you submit a review of decision, first you write it up and you hand it to your case manager and they'll log it into the system. Is it a and, good idea to take a photocopy in case it gets yes, lost? Yes. All, so always have it stamped, photocopied and, right, and get, a, okay. uh, get the original or, yep. or a copy back. Um, and... So it gets entered into the system. Then a few days later, you receive an acknowledgement letter. Then a couple weeks later, they'll write to you and let you know whether they uh, they have uh, overturned their decision or upheld it. And then a, a few weeks after that, you'll have um, what's called a benefit review committee held. Mm-hmm. And so you can go to that if you want. Um, if you don't want to go, you don't have to. You can send someone else along. Uh, you can take people with you. It's up to you. Um, but even within there... Uh, within that, the benefit review committee is made up of two working income staff members and one member of the community. Right. So they have. So at. So their staff members made a decision. Make that you the disagree with. Yeah. And then you're getting that you know reviewed by more people that are in the same organisation as the first person that didn't actually treat you fairly or yeah. didn't. Okay. And, and, a bit biased. And, and and so you you have this BRC. Yeah. And. They already have the majority, so yeah. it's it's just another rubber stamp. So even and if then, the person on the community is on your side, and there's not necessarily any sort of requirement for like yeah. who this person on the community is or why they should care about you, but the and so the the thing is as well, even through all of this, um, so I I was working with somebody, um, and we decided right from the start, no, we wouldn't deal with case managers face to face. No, we wouldn't deal with service centre managers face to face. No, we wouldn't talk to anyone over the phone. Mm-hmm. So the first thing we did was we started, we uh, we phoned them up in the beginning to say, we want all communication over email. Yeah. And everyone was involved in all of the emails. So me, the person I was working with and the yeah. service centre manager, and they went back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Yeah. And... And is that just so you can have a written like exactly sort of record? because as I said, case managers will lie to you. Right. And so, the this back and forth happened for a while, and we were trying to just get the decision made. So that this was for a decision. Uh, th- this was for a, a grant to start a business. So yeah, it was to try and get this. So person someone trying to basically get get an at, income for themselves. And then at the end of it all, a decision finally gets made, and it's declined. And we go, okay, fantastic. It's been declined. That's fine. We submitted an ROD. Okay. And review of decision. Yeah, review yep. of decision. And, and so then that came back and that was that was fine. Um, the first the first step is an internal review. Yeah. And so the internal review comes back, upheld, because the beneficiary said they would not leave the benefit. Which first up isn't a requirement of the um, of the of the program. Yeah. And second up was a lie. And wait, so the beneficiaries didn't say that? Not at all. Okay. Uh, so, um, yeah, the the 
the service centre manager said the beneficiary said they would not leave the benefit. That was a lie. Right. And then the internal review happens. And the in the internal review, you know there's 170 pages of evidence because this um, the server, service centre manager had pulled out all of these emails and had, had printed them all out and then scanned them into the this big report and had accidentally, you know, doubled up a lot of them. But had 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 included everything. Right. And then the internal review happens and the internal review just says upheld beneficiary said they wouldn't leave the benefit. Nothing, nothing had been checked because all of the communications so were included all, all, and it was a lie. Yeah, so all they hadn't reviewed the 170 pages of documents and they just, okay, let's look at this brief. Okay, yep, we're going to go with that brief. And, and So they didn't actually address the, the nature of the complaint, which was that this was a fake, false information. Yeah, and, and so then, um, then we go, and, and we actually said that as well in the review of decision. Right. We said... That's this false. is why we're applying yeah, for yeah. review. And, and so then we go into the benefit review committee after that finally happens. And in the benefit review committee, we sit there and I think I talked for maybe 45 minutes or an hour putting forward the case because the 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 reports and everything were so um, sort of vague as much as that that was a lie. Um, the reports were so vague that it wasn't really clear where we had to go in order to um, mm. in order to convince them that this person should have received this um, grant right and so we 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 talked for a long time and then at the end they sort of uh, have us leave the room for a bit and they they had their little talk and I think at that point realized actually no these people are right. <laughs> This woman was lying because yeah. they they have these big stacks of evidence yeah. in front of them, and, and so we come back in, and then even at the end of all of this, just one of the members of the BRC just makes up another arbitrary rule, says, uh, "Well, no, because you've um, like you're you're not going to leave the benefit immediately. That's that's not your plan." Well, you can't like you okay, you, like, you can't just as someone that owns a business here. Let me just jump in and say that. You know, you can't go from zero to 100 when you're starting a business. It takes a while to build up your customer base. It takes a while to actually get money coming in. And you actually need money coming in so that you can continue to grow and develop that business. Yeah, and so so I, I pushed the, the BRC member on this. Yeah. And I said, so where does this come from? And he goes, it's just common sense. And I go, but what policy is this based on? He goes, it's just common sense. And I go, so this is just a rule that you've uh, come up with. Yeah. And he's like, well, it's just, you know, if I give somebody five grand to, um, to start up a bakery, I expect them to be in the bakery working rather than on the benefit. And, and I go, well... But the thing is, that if you have someone that's starting up a bakery, they probably would be working but still require the benefit exactly. because the $5,000 is not going to get you anywhere. Exactly. And, and the, the thing is as well, every single program that was being applied, every single benefit being applied allowed for this. Right. So this was another um, thing that we, we were arguing. So it was actually a situation where they had no idea about the fact that you know they, you, this is the way that programs work. The program isn't... Exactly. Yeah. I, they, they didn't even include the program within their set of evidence. I had to print them out myself and bring them along. What? Because instead they had, they had copied in a little piece of information that is on one of their internal websites, but it wasn't the actual policy. It wasn't the actual yeah, program. The actual they, they weren't the oh. rules that need to be applied. Yeah. And so clearly the, the decision was just made by somebody who didn't know what they were doing. Mm. Uh, uh, applying a program which they didn't understand, had applied incorrectly, and then had lied about it. Wow. So that, okay, that whole thing started from, you know, basically the case manager not giving the uh, correct information. But I mean, if you, like, so this whole process sounds like it took, like, maybe four or five weeks, maybe a month or two? Uh, it, took, it took a very long time, maybe six months. Right. But Because just getting that decision made in the beginning took so long. Because we, we need the decision made so that we could uh, either have, have a successful result or mm. review. So five or six months to get to a decision. I mean, are there situations where sort of people are in like, you know, really severe circumstances and they need desperate help and they're getting declined and then they're having to wait for five or six months so, for like help or so, like for, for the, these basic things to be, you know, get for the, for the, 
for the policies that we have publicly available to actually be enacted. Yeah. So so uh, I'll give a <laughs> hopefully more brief answer. <laughs> but um, so the I I've had a couple of um, people come to me recently, um, and their issues have been that they have had their benefit cut. And so I, I look into the act and I go, well, it was cut unlawfully. Yep. Uh, work and income has, has messed this up because the, this is clearly just a lie. Like the, the, the way that it's been cut has been unlawful. And so I, I've gone to the, the service center manager and said, look, this is unlawful. And it, it'll take, you know, a month, two months to, to sort sort the thing out. So we submit the review of decision and go, look, this is really, really urgent. Can you please review this immediately? Can you please seek legal advice because this is unlawful mm. and you you need to sort this problem out. This person does not have income. Yeah. And what what the, the service center manager will do is, in both instances this happened, they just don't do anything to it, don't do anything to it, take as long as they possibly can for every stage, hmm. and it goes through internal review, and the internal review, the decision's upheld, because it's hmm. just a rubber stamp, Yeah. and then it goes through to the BRC stage, and at the BRC stage, it, it gets up to the point where the BRC is just about to be organised, and then they just com- conduct a, a review by themselves and overturn the decision. Right. And and so this and, is. I mean, these are these are people's lives that we're talking about. Like is, you know, this is like this is like pretty basic stuff. Like this, this is, is this isn't. Um, I mean, the way you're sort of saying it, it sounds like you know, oh, this is like you know, a game or you know, this is this is like you know, just paper pushing. This is just like things that you know you do sometimes when you're you know, messing around with stuff. But I mean, these, these are people's livelihoods. These How are they lives. paying the rent? How are they paying for food? How are they paying for power? How oh. are they paying for transport? How are they paying for anything over that period of time? Yeah. At the end, they get this massive back pay and, and then, you know, what are they supposed to do with that? It's too little, too late. Just try and pay off all the debts that they've uh, accumulated. Does, I mean, so I'll just go on a different tangent. Um, I mean, your client is sort of reaching out to WINS because they believe that, you know, WINS is there to help. And I mean, that's the expectation society has, yeah. WINS is there to help. How does your client feel to sort of know that WINS is lying to them? Crushed. Yeah. You, well, I mean, like, this is the government that's there, you know, supposedly to help you. And then you've got someone that's from the government, that works for the government, saying, you know, deliberately bending these rules and breaking these rules and going out of their way to... Screw you over, essentially. Yeah. I mean, that, that's, yeah, that, that would be like, it's basically like, you know, saying that, you know, the government just wants me to disappear. Like that. Yeah. Well, that, that's exactly it. You look at the policies that keep coming out uh, from national and occasionally from Labour, and they are these punitive policies that, that, that just serve to stomp down on beneficiaries. Mm. And the whole idea of them is that you're meant to go and pod, prod and poke these mm. beneficiaries to go, look, this is horrible being on the benefit, isn't it? You want to get into work. But as we've already seen, that's people can't just leave yeah. the benefit on to work. And so and you, I mean, you, and you, you get enough pod, prodding and poking, and eventually you just give up. Yeah. And then what? Then and then you stop caring. A, a, but well, you're, it takes, you're gone. You're out of like, the system. You just I know stop. when I've been trying to find the job, like it takes a lot of energy and motivation to, to keep on going, to keep on trying, to, to, to think about different things, to, um, uh, I guess, to like sort of, go, you know, overcome the rejection. It, it hurts when like you apply for a job and like you don't, that you really, you know, looking forward to it. That means the difference between like eating well tonight and not eating. You know, and then like just to get rejecting. I mean, that's that's quite crushing. So it, it takes a lot of motivation and energy to keep on trying to, to do it. And then I guess if you're if you're getting told by the government at the same time, you're useless. We don't go. You. We're going to lie to you. We're going to do everything we can to not give you the support that we you know, so we give other people. That's got to do some serious, you know, messy things with their head in terms of making them care enough to keep on trying well well, the thing is trying can be dangerous because you know though that anecdote or those two anecdotes Mm. of of these people just being kicked off the benefit it's not like this is in one town these are all across the country the 
if if you annoy your case manager too much, they can just kick you off the benefit. And, and then what so this happens? is a life or death decision. Every time it, it you is. go into wins, and, and, and you're like, oh my god, this person could end everything, all my hopes and dreams. And, and the thing is, then then you have the you review your decision and you you follow that along, and it could be a couple of months before your benefit gets started again. You get that back pay. So and, and they can do this just at will, and then there is no negative consequence for that case manager or that service center manager. Okay, I really want to go back to that. Um, but so you know, you're going talking to someone that has literally the ability to make you homeless and starve. But yes. you 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 have the wrong sort of thing, or they don't like you, or you know they 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 judge you, and they can turn your benefit off. You can't pay rent. You get kicked out. You're living on the street. Wow. You know, it doesn't sound like a very professional system. It doesn't sound like a system where we're actually looking after the people that need it most. I mean, these are the people that need it most, right? The reason that we have a social safety net is for the people that actually desperately need help. And, you know, if we have a system where we respect people and we help them and we believe in them, then they can believe in themselves. And if we're not doing that, then people are just going to continue to fail at getting anywhere and doing anything for themselves. Yeah. Whew. Um... So, I mean, I guess, where does this culture come from? Like, oh, I know what it is. You, you mentioned that, you know, there's no punishment for these cases. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, so, okay, I've got two more questions for you. Um, first, how is it that these case managers can lie to what effectively are their customers? How is it you can lie to someone and say, you're not entitled to this, it then gets reviewed and it's found that, actually, hang on a sec, they are entitled to this. Is there no repercussions for that case manager in terms of them deliberately fucking with someone? None. So the the only way you can really get... Because um, there should be some consequences. Like, you know, if I'm working in a cafe and someone's... I don't like... You know, someone comes in their dick and I spit in their coffee or I give them bad service. There's repercussions from that. I could lose my job. You know, if I... You know, if someone orders a uh, coffee with, you know, soy milk and I'm like, you know, haha, stupid vegan, I'm going to put, you know, real cow's milk in there. It turns out they're allergic. That could cause me to lose my job. So, that, I mean, that's like a sort of scene where you make an instant judgment and you do something that's out of line with your work requirements. There's consequences to that. Yeah. Yeah. So, the, the thing is, so I, I've been in that situation where I've... I've worked with somebody and we've eventually managed to get what we need. And I've been so furious at, at the way that they've been lied to, at the way the case managers treated them, at mm. the way the decisions have been made, or at the way things have been conducted unlawfully. Yeah. And I have complained. I have complained to service centre managers about case managers. I've complained to regional commissioners about service centre managers. I've complained to the CEO about certain people. And nothing happens. So every single time, the complaint will either get ignored or it will come back and they'll go, oh, we talked to the person and blah, blah, blah. Right. And or it, it will be just swept under the rug. And right. the only way to And I mean, you have no idea whether they actually talk to that person or not. Like, you know, you there's no sort of public no, information about... None at all. ...what, you know, actually happened. And, and, where and this person was disciplined for effectively denying someone their... What in New Zealand are basic human rights. Yeah, and, and what I always call for is either the person is sacked or that the um, the person is retrained in that area. Because they If you have someone that's lying to, you know, your you know, your customers, your clients, you know, they should either not be working for there or they should um, you know, there should be serious consequences for that so that you actually show them no, this is not the way that we treat people. And so every single time I've made the this style of complaint, nothing's happened. And and so what it, the only uh, option that you have to follow that up is to go to the ombudsman. Yeah. But the ombudsman is so snowed under as it is because yeah. they've been underfunded for so long that it'll take months and months and months before he even gets to this. And on top of that, the, the complaint is all sort of e evidence that's been written down from conversations, which will have been forgotten by everybody involved by the time the ombudsman gets to it. And so there, there is no system to deal 
with people who do this, there are never any negative repercussions for these people. This sounds and like so, the most inefficient circus masquerading as some sort of formal organization. And, exactly. And, and so the, the thing is, you, you look at, at AAAP, and the, the only way that I've ever seen them have something significant done is when they go to the media. But of right. course you can't go to the media, you know, for the hundreds of people well, who I mean, are like to Well, I mean, look at Maturia Ture, who went to the media about, you know, the fact that she wasn't get, you know, she had to make certain decisions because she wasn't getting enough to cover expenses. And it ended up with everyone saying, oh, you're, you know, you know basically beneficiary bashing. Yeah, bashing yeah. And poor, poor shaming. 